Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. And if you haven't already subscribed, you probably don't know how to subscribe on YouTube. It's the big red button that says subscribe underneath this video. Here I'm gonna talk about uh, 10 annotation tools for computer vision, especially with a focus on object detection. In the past, I recorded a video on annotation tools for semantic image segmentation. So here I'm going to focus on uh, object detection, uh, for example, using mask or CNN. You would like to detect objects in a scene, whether it is an image or a video. And I solicited uh, some of uh, uh, some information from the subscribers, from my channel subscribers, and I also talked to a few others who are using some commercial products, and I compiled a list of 10, seven free ones that either I personally used in the past or currently using, or my subscribers actually suggested, or the people that I know of in my personal um, you know, friend circle who have uh, experience with uh, uh, one of these tools. So based on that, I compiled this list. So I hope you find this to be useful. The goal for this uh, video is for me to just list these 10. And I am going to save the best for the last, which is demonstrate my favorite tool in case I don't have uh, hundreds of images uh, on a large project where I do it over multiple days. If I have uh, a small enough project, I just need to sit down for two, three hours just to do quick annotations. Uh, that uh, I'll tell you exactly one tool that I'm going to use or that I use for that specific purpose. So with that in mind, let me go ahead and share my browser so we can go through each and one of these uh, in, in an order. Okay, so I am going to start with VGG Image Annotator. Most people that I know of working on uh, mask or CNN type of uh, object segmentation, they tend to use VGG Image Annotator. This is one of the popular ones, and there are various tools. Again, you can go through the web page, you can go ahead and give it a try. So this is, uh, in my mind, this is uh, the most used. In fact, based on the feedback that I got, this is the most used one. And the other one that's also quite heavily used is CV CVAT or Computer Vision Annotation Tool. It's in the name. You can see how you can annotate videos or still images for, uh, for uh, your computer vision purposes. So this is uh, my recommendation number two. And Label Me is another one that, uh, that uh, again, uh, I used to use. I don't use this uh, quite heavily anymore, but uh, because primarily because I don't do large projects with uh, computer vision, I do projects where I work on maybe 20, 30, 40 images, uh, and I try to annotate them in a single sitting, and I'm gonna show you a tool later on, like I promised, that I use for that type of purposes. So Label Me is uh, number three, and the number four, I wasn't aware of this, again, one of my subscribers, suggested this, so I take it at that person's word. Uh, and uh, this seems to be, again, based on the example, satellite imagery. So if you are into that, maybe go ahead and give this a try. Again, these are all free tools. So the I almost said there's nothing to lose. You will lose some of your time in evaluating these, but you should invest your time in evaluating the best one for you because they all do kind of pretty much the same job. It comes down to do they work on your type of images for whatever the task you're trying to do and how easy it is for you to get that job done. So these are the two factors that you need to look into. Okay, the other one is label image IMG. So this is again very similar uh, most of them have very uh, intuitive interface, let me put it that way. I did not struggle trying to learn any of these interfaces. Uh, they are very intuitive. The software development nowadays, I don't think uh, you even need special UI UX people. Everyone has an idea of what a usable software looks like. So I really appreciate the effort that these guys put into this. Okay, and Label Studio is something I demonstrated in the past for semantic segmentation. This is another one that you can actually use for instance, for many, not just uh, instance. They have audio, text, time series, multi-domain, all types of annotations. So if you're looking for one solution for many, this may be it. If you're only looking for image annotation for mask or CNN to get Coco style uh, object, uh, you know, JSON files, then uh, maybe uh, you can use the one that I'm going to show you in a minute. But uh, this one is one versatile one. If you can bet on one, this is this would be the one. OK, now these are the top six free ones. I am saving the other one for last because I want to demonstrate how to use on at least one 
two, and I picked that one. And the next three I'm going to show you, they are the paid versions. So label box is, uh, again, you can see from the marketing messaging when you get there, nothing wrong with that. It's just that they their core value proposition is for people who want to get these things AI uh, faster, into production faster. So the urgency there is different compared to the free tools, right? And the support. So free tools are great, but if you want the support and if you want the urgency, then uh, commercial paid ones are always the best ones. So uh, label box is very well known. So you probably know that, uh, I mean, they are, they have this uh, bio example. So if you're from biotech, maybe you can focus on uh, label box. And uh, the other one that is new to me, but I heard from someone that this is, uh, this is uh, a tool that I should at least mention to you guys. So you can go ahead and look into this. This is again, scale.com. I thought this used to be scale.io, but anyway, this is the tool. Go ahead and use it again. The value proposition is better data, faster AI. If I go back to label box, that's the same thing, faster AI. So this is all about paid version, right? You want to get to your production, to, to the market, as fast as you, wa uh, you want or you can. So this is where paid ones definitely help with their excellent support. Again, I don't have experience with any of these, but if you're paying, obviously they must be focused a bit on uh, customer support also. Okay, and the third paid one is uh, the Super Annotate right here. Again, let me accept this so we can see. So again, curate, integrate, annotate, manage, automate. So it's not just about a, hey, here you go, there is an annotation tool for you. It's basically they do much more than just providing you an annotation toolkit. Okay, now if you are a student or you're trying to teach yourself how to, how uh, you know, on these, on these mask or CNNs and other tools, then you're probably looking for something free. So if that is the case, then my top three favorites, if you ask me, okay, enough with all top 10, what do you suggest for students who are self uh, learning about these machine learning? There are three things that I'm gonna talk about. Uh, I'll suggest actually. One is the VGG image annotator. This is pretty good for object uh, for computer vision applications. The other one is Label Studio. This is good for computer vision, but also for uh, time series and multi-domain, uh, a whole bunch of other applications. And the third one that is, I think is a one trick pony, but it does an amazing job is Make Sense. Uh, this is, this is, I mean, at least I use this completely for computer vision. That's pretty much it. If I want to generate Coco style labels or VGG style labels, this is it. And uh, the, I think the downside of this, uh, I said, I think, because I haven't figured out a way of uh, uh, signing in and saving my data in the cloud and logging back in tomorrow or the day after, and then continue working on the images. So it's almost like you, if you are using this tool, you have to leave the browser open and do the job in one sitting. But this makes life easy. I mean, at least this toolkit. I don't have any logins, I don't have anything. I literally came to this web page, and now I can just go ahead and get started. That's it, this is how easy it is. So let's go ahead and load a couple of images. And uh, first, let me load a scientific image just to show you uh, what you can do over there. And uh, let's get to object detection. That's what I want to do. And it says before you start, I can go ahead and hit start, but I can add labels and I'm going to call this mitochondria, for example. Okay, I'm gonna show you people and other in a second. Mitochondria and start the projects. So it already has, if you want, you can go to actions, edit labels and add more right there. Yeah, but I have mitochondria already. And now you can use any of these uh, tools, rectangle, point, line, or po polygon. So let me just select polygon and click, 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 and that's it. Uh, obviously you need to be a bit more careful. You can zoom in and you can do all that stuff. You can kind of uh, zoom in and zoom out. And if, he, if this crosshairs is annoying, you can go ahead and remove it. But once I label, go ahead and select mitochondria. That's only for the first one. If I keep adding more, if I keep adding more, it is going to remember that, hey, you did mitochondria the last time, so I assume you're focused on that, so I'm going to label this mitochondria. I can change it if I want, if I have multiple labels, but this is how you go ahead and add labels. Now, you can add more images, so let me go ahead and import images, and here, let us import uh, people image. There's a reason why I'm doing this. Uh, people image, and go ahead and load this. 
Now, when I load people images, again, I can just go ahead and do polygons, I can do rectangles, but uh, it already detected something on my image, under my image, and it's like, hey, you have people, shall I go ahead and do that? Uh, add them as a person, so add a class. Do you wanna add a class called person? I'm like, yeah, go ahead and add it, and it automatically labeled. So why did it do that? Because just before I started this video, I went to actions, load AI model, and I selected Coco SSD. You can select any of these, but I selected Coco and I, I did use model. So in the back end, it's actually using Coco to identify uh, objects and automatically labeling them for me. If that's fine, go ahead and use that. And uh, let's uh, add more images to see. And if the labels are present in Coco, it's going to do that. If I go back to my image right here, it's not going to detect anything in this image because mitochondria is not part of the coco data set so that's the point if i come back here it detected these so let's finish this video by adding a, a couple more images and make things uh, a bit fun let's add bicycles let's add a parking meter um, i think dogs are also part of coco so let's do that i'm curious about this people setting so let's add all of those and let's see what it says so now let's move on to this image it's like hey you do not have parking meter and car as part of the classes, but I detected them. Do you want to add them? So I will add and you see how it detected parking meters and there's a car in the background that it detected. Yeah, it also detected this person, as you can see from the label up there. And let's go to dogs. Hopefully, yeah, there you go. Adding more dogs. So literally, if you are working on a data set where the labels are already present in Coco, then this is this is amazing it it does a great job so bicycle go ahead and add there you go all the bicycles and finally let's see oh there's a clock i don't know let's accept and it thinks that that's a clock obviously it's not doing a good job so let me go ahead and delete that and i can also delete the class so this is why uh, makes sense if makes sense right i mean this is this makes this life uh, or life easy in terms of uh, annotating these if they are non existent like if you are working on uh, classes that do not uh, that are not part of uh, uh, coco then uh, there is uh, there is nothing i mean you can try posenet whatever classes are present in posenet unfortunately i did not find a way to upload my own trained model so I can actually start this annotation using my own trained model. But uh, that's okay. Uh, if you're working with Coco, this does an amazing job. Okay, so in summary, I'll leave the links to all of these that I just talked about as part of the description, or you probably noted them down here. But I hope you are as excited as I am when it comes to make sense, because it really makes sense in terms of making your life easy uh, in defining these and if, if, if it misses something you can always add if it you think it missed this guy go ahead and add that person right there and you can still add person okay okay guys hit the subscribe button again and uh, i'll talk to you in my next video hopefully you find this to be useful if so hit the like button